Y News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Department of Transportation or DOTR readies its transition team that would serve as the maintenance provider of the Metro Rail Transit or MRT Line 3. Here's why from Joanano. The Department of Transportation or DOTR formally terminates its contract with Abusan Universal Rails Incorporated as the maintenance provider of MRT Line 3. The DOTR nullified the contract for what it claims as failure of Buri to properly overhaul the MRT. Poor performance and that constitutes derailment, passenger loading, stoppages. We also cited their, their failure to procure spare parts and their failure to deliver efficient and reliable contractually obligated trains. And lastly, their failure to comply with setting up a computerized management, maintenance management system. The DOTR also denies the statement of Buri that the rails of the MRT are the reason for the repeated glitches in the trains. On the other hand, Buri says the DOTR should not put on them all the blame for the glitches of the MRT, noting that they were able to provide the needed number of the trains and even the purchase of spare parts needed for the coaches. As to poor performance, wala kasi nakakapag-comply kami with the, ano, with the number of trains na kailangan per hour, per, per peak hours, off peak, ganyan. Tapos spare parts, hindi rin totoo yun. We filed the case kasi nga kailangan na namin yung funds dahil hindi kami binabayaran ng maayos. Tapos binibintang pa sa amin lahat ng sira. Buri says the DOTR should also pay them more than 350 million peso in debt for its past services. However, the DOTR stands firm it has no debt to pay as it is where they will get the penalties they will impose on Buri for the repeated glitches of the MRT trains. Meanwhile, while waiting for a new maintenance provider, the maintenance transition team of the DOTR will supervise the maintaining of the trains. The transition team is composed of senior engineers and rail experts from LRT Line 1 and the Philippine National Rail or PNR. Ay titiyakin na yung iaangat ay maayos. Kung sakali na magkaroon ng pag-usok o magkaroon ng diferensya, dahil kami na ang maintenance service provider dito ang gobyerno, uh, mas maliwanag na sa amin ngayon kung ano ang mga sasakyan, mga light rail vehicles ang iaangat at kung sakasakaling mayroon kami pagdududa, pag-uusapan namin ang maigyan at tatapatin namin ang mga mananakay as early as 5 o'clock in the morning. Aside from this, the DOTR will also tap the other personnel of Buri who will lose their jobs due to the termination of the Korean firm's contract with the government. Meanwhile, Buri files an appeal before the Quezon City Regional Trial Court for a protection order it filed last October. With the protection order, Buri expects the temporary withdrawal of the DOTR's decision to terminate its contract for the maintenance of MRT. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Ten employees of the Correctional for Women were implicated in illegal drug trade inside the facility. Monokson will tell us why. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PIDEA, conducted Oplan Galugad inside the Correctional Institution for Women earlier today. More than 5 million pesos worth of illegal drugs were confiscated inside the facility. The drugs were confiscated from Taiwanese national Yuklai Yu, alias Ana Sibalneo, a known drug lord. Yuklai is 72 years old and an inmate in the CIW and is said to be connected with drug lords in other major penitentiaries in the country. The illegal drugs were hidden inside panty liners and other packages. Aside from illegal drugs, the PIDEA sees a million pieces of capsules which are suspected to be containing shabu checks amounting to more than 600,000 pesos, ATM cards, one bank account with more than 1.5 million pesos deposited to Anasi Balmeo, and other currencies worth more than 100,000 pesos. We conducted the test by operations, uh, three test by operations, and we were able to buy illegal drugs to Yuyu Klai. Uh, from then on, the case build up kami. Yuklai is also using her daughter, Diane Yuklai, for other transactions outside the penitentiary. Diane was also arrested for possession of one kilo of shabu. The PIDEA also subjected all CIW employees to a drug test. Ten employees were found to be involved in the drug trade inside the prison. Allegedly, the prison guards allow entry of deliveries for Lai without undergoing inspection. Instead of going to the entrance, they are going to the back to the back door 
dun sa exit sila pumapasok. And nobody there to try to frisk or to check the, the, the things that is uh, being brought inside the CIW. The current director of CIW, Elsa Alabado, was relieved and was replaced by attorney Daisy Castellote. This is the first time an anti-drug operation was conducted inside the Correctional Institution for Women. Monhokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Mandaluyong City. The Bureau of Customs has confiscated 18 luxury vehicles amounting to 107.9 million pesos. Rajel Adora will tell us why. Commissioner Isidro La Peña led the opening of container vans with luxury vehicles inside that were seized last month. 107.9 million pesos worth of 18 smuggled luxury vehicles were confiscated by the Bureau of Custom at the Manila International Container Port. The BOC says the shipments were undervalued. The Bureau received an intelligence information and has issued an alert order to inspect the shipments. The verification should be quick. It should be done in 48 hours. And if uh, the information is uh, negative, is not true, then the, the shipment should be allowed to pass. The luxury vehicles came from Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States of America. The vehicle seized are 12 Land Cruisers, 3 Range Rovers, 2 Chevrolet Camaro, and 1 McLaren 720S. The consignee of the said luxury vehicles, Gamma Gray Marketing, and broker Roy Las Doque are now under investigation. The law division of the MICP will conduct the seizure proceedings and the consignee or claimant uh, will be afforded due process and uh, they will uh, be allowed to present evidence in their behalf. Rujia Ladora, UNTV News Rescue, Manila. The employees of the Social Security System, or SSS, fear for the agency's crash in the stock market following a stock trading issue. Grace Kassin tells us why. The employees of the Social Security System, or SSS, expressed their disappointment when one commissioner made a public disclosure of an alleged stock trading among four commissioners amid the ongoing investigation on the matter. They fear this action could result in SSS stock market crush. Ang SSS ay major player po sa local stock market. Kapag po humina ang kumpiyansa ng international uh, community sa, sa, sa ating uh, sistema dito sa uh, ating uh, pamamahala, ay uh, yung pong epekto nito ay tatamaan kagad yung ating ekonomiya. Ang uh, panawagan ko lang po sa aking kaibigan, si Commissioner Labinia, is to avoid uh, what we call yung trial by publicity. Kasi unfair po yun sa amin eh, sa institution. SSS members are also worried on its effect to their contributions. Uh, sana po hindi maapektuhan yung mga naihuhulog namin uh, para pagdating ng panahon na uh, kailangan na namin dahil senior na kami. Dapat uh, ano po, maintak, maibigay sa amin yung mga ano namin mga inihulog na benefits kasi kailangan namin po yan eh. Sana hindi na maapiktuhan ng ACS kasi doon tayo umaasa sa pundo ng ACS. Meanwhile, SSS Chairman Amado Valdez says SSS members have the right to know everything that's happening inside the agency. At the end of the day, napabuti naman yung SSS kasi napag-uusapan ng SSS eh. Di ba? No news is bad news eh. So, merong bagong ganyan, may news na ganyan, so pinag-uusapan. Nasasabi natin ngayon kung ano mga programa na SSS. I look at it positively. Valdez assures that the funds of SSS are intact and they are open for the investigation that the lower house plans to conduct. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The military is now looking for a certain Amin Bako, the one who allegedly replaced Isnilan Hapilon as the Islamic State or ISIS Emir in Southeast Asia. However, the country's defense chiefs say they do not consider Bako a threat. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. According to him, it's uh, Amin Bacho. Hindi lang sa remaining stragglers doon, kundi sa buong Southeast Asia na kay, kasi si Isnilan man ang former Emir, di ba? Ngayon, siya ngayon na nag-assume sa posisyon ni Isnilan as uh, Isnilan Hapilon. 
as the Emir of uh, uh, Southeast Asia, ISIS. Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa confirmed that the Islamic State or ISIS has a new emir in Southeast Asia. De la Rosa notes the information came from the arrested Indonesian fighter Muhammad Ilham Shaputra. However, Department of National Defense or DND Secretary Delfin Lorenzana says the public has nothing to worry about even though the military has not yet captured the alleged new ISIS emir identified as Amin Baku. Lorenzana explains the new ISIS emir is not as strong as Isnelon Hapilon saying it's the first time Amin's name has surfaced. Obviously, hindi naman lumalabas yung pangalan niya noon. Ngayon man ang lumalabas yan. Uh, maybe he's not as high profile as Isnelon. Or mga middle level lang yan. Pero since wala nang leaders na mas mataas sa kanya, then he may be, he may be also taking over. The defense chief says Amin does not have the capability like Hapilon to mass a huge number of troops. Hindi naman minamaliit, pero he's not, he can no longer, sa tingin ko, he can no longer uh, mass that number of troops na nakaya ni Isnilon na dalhin sa Marawi. It's about close to 1,000 uh, fighters fully equipped and uh, fully armed and fully supplied with the ammunition. Lorenzana notes the military is sweeping every corner of Marawi City and nearby provinces to capture Baku. Arrested Indonesian terrorist Muhammad Ilham Shaputra identified Baku as the new ISIS emir in Southeast Asia. It can be recalled military troops captured Shaputra recently in Marawi City. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue Camp, Aguinaldo. government says its security forces are 90% ready to provide security for the delegates and heads of states visiting for the upcoming Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN Summit next week. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Authorities deployed 60,000 security personnel from the Philippine National Police or PNP, Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP, Bureau of Fire Protection or BFP, Philippine Coast Guard or PCG, and several other government agencies to ensure the safety and security of those who will attend the major event. The security forces will have 400 patrol cars, 200 motorcycles, and 22 armored cars. Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG officer in charge, Catalino Cui, says the assigned security personnel are ready to face and address any physical and even cyber threats. It can be noted Cui also serves as the chairman of the ASEAN Committee on Security, Peace and Order, Emergency and Preparedness and Response. Meanwhile, PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa belies circulating reports that four women in Basilan are now in Metro Manila to bomb areas near the venue of the ASEAN Summit. According to the PNP Chief, the said news report is hoax and that the public should not believe it. Hoax lang yan. Hoax uh, kasi expected natin yan. Alam nyo, pag ganitong season of uh, uh, may malaking event, uh, maraming influence peddler. Marami yan magbibinta ng information, mananakot para, alam mo na, uh, para to maintain the relevance. Ika nga, may na relevant pa rin kami dahil nakapagbigay kami ng information na ganito. But hoax yan, yung mga ginagawa na yan. Makinig lang kayo sa advisory coming from the government security forces. De La Rosa also assures the public that the PNP will remain on alert for any threats to the country's security. The PNP chief also advises the public to refrain going to areas near the venue of the ASEAN summit to avoid inconvenience. He calls on the everyone to follow the guidelines coming from the PNP to maintain the orderliness of the conduct of the ASEAN summit. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA will implement a lockdown of some areas in Pasay City beginning on Wednesday. Joanano tells us why. 
Several roads in Pasay City and Manila will be closed to motorists as part of the security authorities will implement for the upcoming 31st ASEAN Summit and related meetings. 22 heads of states are expected to attend the said event. Beginning on Wednesday, authorities will implement a partial lockdown of the CCP complex in Pasay City. On November 11, Saturday, motorists and pedestrians can no longer pass through the stretch of SMX Max block in Pasay City, while a complete lockdown of the entire CCP complex will be implemented on the 12th of November, Sunday. The stretch of Ross Boulevard from Padre Burgos Avenue to Buendia Avenue in Manila will be closed to traffic beginning 12.01 a.m. on Monday or November 13, while authorities will partially lift the lockdown of the SMX Max block of the same time. At 12 in the afternoon, the closed parts of Ross Boulevard will reopen to traffic, while the CCP complex will remain closed until November 14. Authorities will partially lift the lockdown on Wednesday next week, November 15. Meanwhile, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA will implement a stop-and-go scheme on the areas where the convoys of heads of states will pass through like the SETEX and the stretch of NLEX up to EDSA. Avoid tailing the convoys even during dry runs because... Uh, uh, not only is it uh, no, uh, it is uh, uh, dangerous, baka kasi mapagkama lang kayo, lalo na during the actual convoys. The two inner lanes of the EDSA southbound lane will be exclusively used only by the convoys by the heads of states. Yung exclusive lanes natin for uh, the ASEAN, uh, bali two lanes, yung innermost, yung meaning yung sa may MRT wall. During the event, during the event, wag na wag. Kasi talaga exclusive siya. Pero pagka let's say naman eh, nandun na lahat sa may na, nasa PICC na sila, pwede natin case to case siguro pagka may mabigit ang traffic sa area, pwede natin padanan. Especially doon sa mga emergency. The MMDA will also implement a stop-and-go scheme along the Jose Jocno Boulevard up to Entertainment City in Pasay City as well as in several parts of Ayala Avenue and McKinley Road. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. The much-awaited first meeting of President Rodrigo Duterte and U.S. President Donald Trump will happen sooner than earlier expected. Rosalie Cost will tell us why. President Rodrigo Duterte will be on a four-day working visit in Vietnam from November 8 to 11, 2017. He will attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC Economic Leaders Meeting together with the other world economic leaders. It is expected that President Duterte will be able to meet with U.S. President Donald Trump. They could possibly have the chance to talk during the welcome ceremony, gala dinner, sidelines or other engagements during the APEC summit and discuss some issues on economy and security. So there's several, several opportunities for exchanges. I think uh, if, you, if you see uh, pretty much the convergence uh, between the two presidents would be one on uh, national security, uh, both at the uh, country level and at the regional uh, level. And then number two, the, the desire to, to grow the uh, different engines of uh, global uh, econo e economy. No? The talks, however, may not be that extensive as other world economic leaders are also present in the event. While I understand there will be bilateral talks, I don't think it will be as extensive as his bilateral talks here in Manila, plus the fact that he will be spending a whole, an extra day in Manila. No? So I expect that they would have more opportunity for, to interact with each other here in Manila. The DFA, however, reiterates that the schedule for the bilateral meetings during the sidelines of APEC for President Duterte is not yet final. There is also a chance for the chief executive to meet other economic leaders who will not visit the Philippines for the ASEAN summit on November 12 to 14, such as Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The increase in toll rates in the North Luzon Expressway prompted an outcry from vegetable dealers. Here's why from Joe Anano. Vegetable dealers and vendors from the provinces of Central and Northern Luzon as well as those coming from Batangas complain that the toll fare hike is another burden to them. They argue that they cannot charge the amount they will spend on the fare hike to the consumers of their products. Malaki pong epekto sa mga biyahera katulad namin. Kasi po unang-una po, tumaas ang toll gate, tumaas ang kurudo, hindi pa po kami makapagkarga sa bubong. 
yun pong dating kinikita namin na 10,000, 5,000 na lang po. Dagdag pasanin na naman po kung tataas na naman yung sa toll gate, hindi naman po tumataas yung aming gulay. Motorists plying the stretch of the North Luzon Expressway or NLEX will have to pay an additional 25 centavos in toll per kilometer starting today. This means an 18 peso increase in toll rate from the previous 218 for vehicles coming from Balintawaki in Quezon City going to Santa Ines, Mabalakat in Pampanga. Class 1 vehicles from Balintawak to Mabalakat, Pampanga will have to pay 236 pesos. From 544 pesos, toll will be 590 pesos for Class 2 vehicles. And from 652 pesos, toll will be 708 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. The Enlex Corporation explains the toll increase was approved so it could recover the amount it spent on the widening of the part of the expressway from Marilao, Bulacan to Santa Ines, Pampanga. Nag-widen talaga tayo ng from Santa Rita to San Fernando. No, dati, 2x2 two two lang yan gawin. Ngayon, 3x3 three three na siya. And then, mapapansin nyo kahit doon sa may Candaba Viaduct, three lanes na rin siya in each direction. Ano? So, sa ngayon, naglagay rin tayo ng mga uh, crossovers. Meron tayong zipper lane na doon pag kinakailangan. Of course, inilawa natin yung Aside from NLEX, motorists plying the Star Toll Plaza will also have to pay an additional of 67 centavos per kilometer. The toll rate hike covers motorists plying Santo Tomas to Batangas City. This means a 97 peso increase from the previous 67 peso toll rate for Class 1 vehicles, 190 pesos for Class 2, and 286 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. On the other hand, the Toll Regulatory Board or TRB has once again clarified that the toll hike is just provisional or temporary. The TRB says provisional toll hike will remain until they finish examining the petitions filed against the enforcement of the toll increase. Joanano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Next on Y News. The military has killed nine Mauta stragglers in the main battle area in Marawi City today. And Malacanang calls for the resignation of Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Y News will be right back. Gentlemen, I hereby declare Marawi City liberated. The Philippine Air Force is considered a game changer in the Marawi War. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The Philippine Air Force played a vital role in Marawi siege. The military unit is considered a game changer as it contributed a lot in killing terrorists through airstrike, among others. Without them, I believe uh, we cannot uh, really win yung Marawi City. It's really a game changer and uh, uh, we saw that uh, the Philippine Air Force uh, play a very vital role in terms of uh, turning the tide and uh, instilling the fear uh, and the will, of, will to fight uh, ng Maute ISIS ay na-destroyed. Kung wala ang uh, game changers ng Philippine Air Force, uh, this siege may take longer, probably another six months. Uh, because it will just be pure ground fighting. This soldier refused to face the camera because of security concerns, but he is one of the pilots of UH 18 helicopters of Philippine Air Force. He played a significant role in transporting wounded soldiers in the fight in Marawi City. wounded. <laughs> Ikaw bilang piloto, nandun na yung drive mo. Hindi lang piloto, lahat ng air crew na nandun sa, sa chopper, kung kasama na yung mga medical team, paano nyo maisalba yung buhay dun na, na madagdagan pa yung uh, ano niya, buhay niya? The role of this soldier is also sensitive. As a forward air controller, he is the direct contact of the pilot about the location of their enemies. Bilang controller po sa ground, so mas delikado po kasi po... Uh, before ng delivery ng bomba, nandun po kami sa pinaka minimum safe distance ng ammunition. A soldier who asked to be called Blaster also performed a crucial task 
in the fight as an explosive ordinance disposal personnel. Ginamit nila kami to breach the wall no? para sila makapenetrate dun sa area. Kasi ang labanan kasi nagkaroon ng labanan ng building to building ang pagitan. No? Kaya ganun ka delikado. Before uh, papasok yung assault team ng army, kailangan maklir muna namin yung dadaanan nila. The three soldiers were among the over 1,000 Philippine Air Force personnel who fought in Marawi. 200 of the airmen who arrived earlier were given a hero's welcome in Villamor Air Base, Pasay City. The soldiers were given medals in recognition of their gallantry. Not a single personnel from Air Force died in the five-month battle. Meanwhile, the soldiers' families are so thankful to finally reunite with them. Normal sa isang uh, asawa mo sundalo, lagi mong ini, uh, pangalawa lang kami. Kumbaga, yun ang first priority niya talaga. Nakakalungkot lang yung mga nawalan ng, ng, ng uh, sundalo din, yung mga namatay din. Kasabi ko, salamat, hindi kasali doon yung pamilya na, yung asawa ko. Hey Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Philippines. Francisco Duque formally returns as the country's health secretary today. Duque says the priority now of the Department of Health is the rehabilitation of Marawi City. Ayoko Miguel will tell us why. May angat muli natin ang buong DOH bilang number one agency of the Philippine bureaucracy under the Duterte administration. Ha? Kinakailangan po natin ito. This is what returning Department of Health or DOH Secretary Francisco Duque wants to achieve. Duque vows to properly use the 164.8 billion peso proposed budget of the DOH for year 2018. The Health Secretary says his priority now is to follow the directive of President Rodrigo Duterte to help in the rehabilitation of the strife-torn Marawi City. The DOH has to do... Uh its best to, to help rehabilitate Marawi uh, in general and in particular the uh, health systems of Marawi. We need to, uh, to bring it back. Duque is also set to visit Marawi City to check on the situation of the evacuees there. The DOH continues to distribute medical supplies to the battle-torn area for the ongoing conduct of medical assistance, mental, psychosocial and psychological debriefing to the victims of the war. We have to uh, make sure that uh, all the uh, health services, health programs and projects uh, that have been planned are uh, implemented uh, and uh, hopefully avoiding delays because that is what the people are really frustrated about. It's the, uh, sometimes the delays. Duque notes he wants to continue enforcing the health strategy of the administration of former President and now Pampanga Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. And you know, in 2009, your DOH has actually committed to sign up with the Institute for Solidarity in Asia and the Development Academy of the Philippines. We were one of the early adopters of the performance governance system. Meanwhile, Duque has expressed gratitude to former Health Chief Dr. Pulin Ubial for proving support and guidance to the DOH. Secretary Duque also assures Dr. Ubial of finishing all the programs she implemented in the Health Department. Dr. Ubial, meanwhile, says she's open to serving the government anew if she will be given the opportunity. Hindi naman natin sinasara yung ganong possibility ano, because uh, I am a SESO, a Career Executive Service Officer. I am uh, qualified and if opportunity opens, then uh, I might consider returning to government. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Government troops have killed nine Maute stragglers in the main battle area this morning. Among them was Ibrahim Maute alias Abu Jamil, a relative of the Maute brothers and the group's supply officer. They will be buried tomorrow. In total, the number of bodies buried in the mass grave has reached 164. Around 700 are still yet to be recovered by authorities. In connection with the report on the new emir of ISIS in the Philippines, just this evening, AFP spokesperson Major General Restituto Padilla confirms in a statement that Malaysian terrorist 
Amin Bako is already dead. Malacanang calls for the resignation of Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Rosa Licos will tell us why. The Supreme Court does not deserve to have a second Chief Justice be impeached by the Senate. This is the statement of Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque. So to spare the Supreme Court from further damage, Malacanang encourages Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno to resign. So I call upon um, Chief Justice Sereno to really consider resigning if only to spare the institution from any further damage. Roque also assures that this is also the position of President Rodrigo Duterte and this does not mean that the executive branch is intervening with the judiciary. I'm commenting about an impeachment proceeding and it has nothing to do with the judiciary. It's about the personal liability of an impeachable officer and the issue there is whether or not she committed impeachable offenses. So I'm not undermining the judiciary. I'm not intervening in the affairs of the judiciary. On the other hand, CJ Serenos camp remains firm that the Chief Justice will not be resigning and she will face the impeachment proceedings to preserve the dignity and independence of the Supreme Court and the office of the Chief Justice. Sereno also said she has done nothing to damage the institution and she has been doing everything to strengthen it. Meanwhile, Akbayan Party List Representative Tom Villarin said such statement of Roque implies the obvious intervention of Malacanang in the impeachment process. President Duterte before has challenged both CJ Sereno and Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales to resign with him because of his alleged hidden wealth and selective justice of Ombudsman. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Speaking at the opening of the, of the International Organization for Judicial Training Conference in Taguig City, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno reminds fellow justices and members of the legal profession about the resurgence of political forces which are threatening and harassing the independence of the judiciary in different regions. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno continues to do her duties despite the impeachment lodged against her in Congress. She graces today's opening of the four-day conference of justices and members of the legal profession from 28 countries. The Chief Justice warns about the resurgence of threats from politicians in different regions. Allow me to remind everyone that the world has been seen in many regions a resurgence of political forces threatening and harassing the independence of the judiciary. Sereno says, like the kings in the past, politicians demand that courts declare their acts as legal to make them appear as legitimate actions under the law. It indicates to a certain extent that the judiciary in those parts of the world and in those times in history, had a measure of credibility that politicians wanted to appropriate for whatever political purpose they deemed important. The Chief Justice reminds fellow justices that the courts have a big role in keeping the rule of law for the future of humankind. The judiciary must never forget the value of each human being while also never forgetting that the community has interests that must be protected by reasonable restraints on the activities of individuals. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Sereno insisted that the purchase of a bulletproof car is not for luxury, but for her security. Lawyer Josa de Inla says the purchase of the Land Cruiser worth over 5 million pesos was authorized by the court and bank. Hindi yan binili dahil gusto nila magpakadonya, dahil sa kapricho niya. Yan ay binili para pangalagaan si Chief Justice dahil mayroong uh, security risk sa kanya bilang punong maestrado. The Inland noted the Supreme Court owns the car and Sereno was only using it for official business. Nevertheless, this is being cited as one of the grounds in impeachment complaint of Attorney Larry Gadon. The Inlas says this and the other accusations against the Chief Justice are all baseless. Nakikita natin kasi na maaari nagkakaroon ng, ng delay dahil uh, walang ebidensya na may iaharap pa sa puntong ito kay Chief Justice. At tiwala kami na wala talaga silang mahanap. 
whether or not the complaint is transmitted to the Senate is immaterial to her lawyers, so long that Sereno is given the chance to present her case and confront the witnesses. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Stay to witness Mark Ventura's statements regarding the death of Horacio Acho Castillo in today's Senate hearing had been limited. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The statement of AG's Juris Fraternity member turned state witness Mark Ventura on what he witnessed in the initiation rites on Horacio Acho Castillo III on September 17 has been limited. He says four members have alternately hit Acho before he went unconscious. The four even brought Acho to sit to talk to him but he was already unresponsive. Sinasabi ko po sa kanya na kaya niya po yun, yung proseso po nung gabi na yun. And lagi ko po sa kanya pinapaalala yung sinasabi niya sa akin tuwing nag-uusap kami na ang, for, ang gusto niya kasi is purpose. Ventura adds that it took them about 30 minutes before bringing Acho to the hospital. Ventura then refused to give further details but says he is ready to tell all in the proper court. Senators Juan Miguel Zubiri and Grace Po on the other hand expressed dismay over John Paul Solano who as they had earlier expected will give concrete details to the crime. Parang pinapagaan mo pa marahil ang mga naging responsibilidad ng mga kasamahan mo. Kaya isinisi mo pa sa atake sa puso. Bakit mo pa sinabi yun? Uh, Your Honor, kahit naman po kami nagtataka bakit po ganun yung cause of death. Tapos iba po yung sinabi nila nung previous Senate hearings po. However, the result of the final autopsy on Acho belies what was stated in the death certificate. The final uh, autopsy uh, report uh, signed by the medical legal uh, officer, uh, the cause of death is uh, severe blunt traumatic injuries, both uh, upper limbs. That is the cause of death. Conversely, Acho's parents appealed to the senators to make a law that will totally prohibit the conduct of hazing in fraternity initiations. And maybe alisin na talaga yung that practice of hazing. You don't need it. Eh. After going through hazing, after becoming lawyers, and when you look back, you would say to yourself na you didn't do anything for you to become good people. Meanwhile, AG's jurist leader Arvin Balag will remain to be detained in the Senate pending the result of his petition to the Supreme Court. Sabi ko nga, nobody wants to lose by default. So mas may inam na ilaban na lang ng Supreme Court. So he asked for it, then we'll give it to him. DOJ Prosecutor General George Catalan Jr. says they have received the counter affidavits of all 42 respondents of the case. He ensures that they will release their resolution on Acho's death at the soonest possible time. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Mental health advocates are push for the approval of a proposed bill that targets to address mental health cases in the country. Abby Santa Ines will tell us why. Apart from medicines, psychosocial therapy and training have helped psychiatric patient Bong Hizon. Medicine alone is not enough. Kailangan namin yung psychosocial rehabilitation kasi this is the holistic treatment eh. So far, Bong has gradually developed the confidence to do music and hosting, the two things that he loves most. A Department of Health and World Health Organization report shows seven Filipinos attempt to commit suicide every day. Number one cause of this attempt is depression, especially among youth ages 18 to 25. This prompted a mental health group to push for the approval of the bill that aims to provide the said therapy. Hindi lang ito yung mga taong depressed o nawala sa sarili o uh, mga taong may epilepsy, kundi parte yung mga nakaranas ng mga di ka nais na mga uh, karanasan gaya ng sa bagyo. The bill aims to intensify the country's mental health services. It also aims to include mental health education in school curriculum from elementary to college level. Kasi marami sa atin na hindi nakakaintindi ano ba yung mental health na yan. Hindi ba para sa mga topak lang yan? Kung gusto lang magpakamatay? Hindi. Yan ay para sa lahat na maintindihan natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng lusog-isip o mental health. 
at yan ay hindi lamang para sa mga meron ng simptomas. The Philippine Psychiatric Association adds that even those affected by calamities and war, such as those in Marawi, need psychosocial intervention or rehabilitation. Need psychosocial intervention para mapanumbalik ang isip, damdamin, at maintindihan ng mga tao kung ano yung mga pinagdaanan nilang trauma. The bill is slated for the third and final reading at the House of Representatives when the session resumes this month. Abby Santaynes, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC reopens today the voters' registration for the village and Sangguniang Kabataan polls. The registration begins today and will end on the 30th of November. All COMELEC offices are open from Monday to Saturday from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. According to the poll body, the, re the registration in various parts of Metro Manila is so far okay. The poll body expects 500,000 new barangay registrants and an estimated of 350,000 new SK registrants this November. Meanwhile, aside from Lanao del Sur, all city, district, and municipal offices of the election officers or OEOs are open to receive registration, reactivation, change and correction of entries, inclusion and reinstatement of records of voters. Application forms are free at all OEOs and are also available for download via www.comelec.gov.eh. After downloading the application forms, registrants should print it and bring three copies to the Office of the Election Officers. The Singapore International Robo Expo has returned after its successful debut in 2016, but this time with a bigger and more comprehensive lineup of solutions and technologies in the automation and robotics space. Here's why from Myla Guevara. The recently concluded Singapore International Robo Expo 2017 hopes to provide companies, individuals, and various stakeholders a regional and hopefully a global marketplace for innovations in robotics to leverage more on the growth of the industry. We want to create a marketplace so that uh, all the practitioners of the robotics industry, whether is it from the companies, whether is it from the uh, users, uh, whether is it from the technologies, but they can come together. Uh, they can discuss, they can talk about uh, how you use robotics to solve problems. But more importantly is uh, to think about what else can robotics do uh, in our daily lives. One of the key highlights of the event is the signing of three Memorandum of Understanding Agreements between Singapore and its Southeast Asian counterparts in Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand on its push to help the region establish and develop its robotics ecosystem. UNTV is one of the few media networks able to have first-hand experience of the latest in robotics technology, some of which include the Robot Cafe, the Robot Arm, FNB Delivery Robots, Humanoids Robots, AUV Autonomous Vehicles, Driverless Vehicles, and many others. I think robotics is very, very important in the industry because as we adopt technology within the companies and within the SMEs, most companies want to adopt technology but are very afraid to do so or don't know how to start. That's where robotics training becomes very important. So we help businesses to understand the importance of robotics, how we can increase the productivity, how we can increase the manpower, productivity, and also how to deploy technology within the company. Another important features in the event are the 15-seater Navia Arma minibus, which currently in trial at Sentosa Island, and autonomous baggage tractor, where existing baggage tractor vehicles are fitted with an autonomous add-on kit, RFID transponders, global positioning system, radars, and cameras. Close to 70 companies and organizations from different countries showcase their latest products and services in this Singapore International Robo Expo. This is indeed a regional marketplace to discover business opportunities, projects and funding availabilities for the adoption of robotic solutions. Myla Guevara, UNTV News and Rescue Singapore. Coming up on Y News.
The Japanese government plans to officially impose an exit tax on both natives and foreigners leaving the country beginning the fiscal year 2019. And the win win Marquez wins the first ever Reina Hispano Americana crown for the Philippines. More from Y News after this break. The PNP responders tasted the bitter pill of losing, while the GSIS Furies enters the winner's column in Season 6 of The League of Public Servants. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. In the GSIS COA match, the Furies claims its first win in the season after toppling the COA neighbors 105-83 on Sunday at the Basic City Sports Arena. The GSIS now has one game won and two games lost, while the enablers has a 0-4 win-loss standing. The Beauties was led by Reddy Boy Banzali, who was hailed as the best player of the game. In the Kamao Food Masters face-off, the Malacanang PSC Kamao retains a clean slate after beating the DA Food Masters 91-78. The Food Masters dominated the second and third quarters, but the Kamau intensified its offense in the last quarter and snatched the lead until the final buzzer of the game went off. Kamau head coach Louis Gonzalez admits a slow start had prevented them from controlling the game. Kailangan ko ma-address yung problema ngayon eh, yung slow start. I told them na, guys, remember, finalist tayo last year. Tapos, wala pa tayong talo this season. Sigurado ako, yung kalaban natin, pag-apak pa lang sa court na yan, sobrang respeto sa atin yan. Now, kung di natin re-respetuhin yan, ganyan lagi mangyayari. Magugulat tayo na malalabang na lang tayo bigla. Swerte pa kami sa ngayon dahil every time we decided to play, ayun, buti, na, buti nalulus, nakakalusot kami. On the other hand, Food Masters coach Saudi Reilubit believes that his players should intensify their endurance individually and collectively. Hindi ko alam kung uh, ubos na kami, pagod na kami. Hindi na namin nagawa yung dapat namin gawin sa fourth quarter. So, tingin ko, more practice pa kami. And in the responders' defenders' battle, the PNP side suffered its first loss from the Senate defenders last night. Harley Long and Jeffrey Sanders were hailed as the best players of the game after displaying superb performance to lead the defenders to a 68-56 win. Almost a uh, two weeks break kami for this game. So with that two weeks break, siguro nakatatlo, apat na isayo kami dyan. Pinag-preparahan pinag, uh, talaga namin to. So uh, we work on our uh, offensive sets. Kasi yung depensa, meron naman eh. Pero... Yung, yung offensive sets namin, nagkakaroon kami ng problema. Walang, walang identity, nagkakanya-kanya kong minsan. So, nag-devote uh, kami ng much time doon. Meanwhile, PNP coach Eric Samson considers practicing more to gear up for future games. One game at a time naman palagi kami nag-prepare. Against this, siguro magiging isang way to para mag uli kami kung anong gagawin namin sa next against sa uh, AFP kung sakasakali. Oh. Bernard Dadis, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Win-Win Marquez sets the bar high for the future Philippine candidate to the Latin America's prestigious pageant Reina Hispano-Americana. Here's why from Leslie Longboen. Filipina beauty source in the Reina Hispano-Americana 2017 after the first ever Asian and Filipina who joined the pageant Teresita San Win-Win Marquez won the crown in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. The Filipina contestant wowed the audience and the judges by her answer in the question and answer portion. She was asked how she could promote the Hispanic American culture despite the language barrier. Win-Win answered she believes everyone can understand each other if kindness would be the universal language. She said the Hispanic culture is not just about language but is also about love for God, the country, history and culture, and family. And as a Filipina with a unique heritage, Win-Win has all of these qualities. 
in her message on the official Facebook page of the Reina Hispano-Americana, Winwin thanked all her supporters. I am very happy and I promise I will make the Hispanic culture alive. I will learn Spanish and it's time. It's time to bring back where I come from. This is my roots and I'm very proud. I love you, Filipinas. Mabuhay din. Meanwhile, Brazil's representative is the first runner-up. Venezuela, the second runner-up, while Mexico is the third runner-up in this year's pageant. Before going back to her home country, the Filipino community in Bolivia held a gathering for the Filipina pride. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, November 6, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold, I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news.